Hello everyone. Welcome to the Matli Satsang. It's so good to see some of you present here at this time. We have been trying to do this for quite some time now. And, uh, well, the time has not been with us. And seems like now is the time. So we are here. Uh, so, so good to see all the faces here in person. We tried to do this uh, a couple of months before. Uh, so that happened in Bruce actually. So there was a small gathering that we were able to meet. And so I was able to get some trial done. You know, all this needs practice. So uh, I was able to get a little bit of practice. Sorry, I'm checking my WhatsApp. Uh, my friends are telling me that audio is good. So we are good. Uh, because last time as we so uh, some of you might have seen that uh, the broadcast from Bruce wasn't that good. Uh, so the video was okay, but the audio quality was lacking. Uh, this is just a, you know, uh, trying to learn the, the tricks. Uh, and our master has been doing these tricks for a long time, you know. So he was perfect in all sense. And so I'm just taking uh, baby steps uh, because he asked me to do this. And, you know, I, I'm very fearful of being a place like this, you know, uh, being center of attraction. I've just been hiding from people all my life. And uh, there was a time when uh, I, was, I was very small, probably five, six years old. And uh, that day still haunts me. When I was small, uh, I guess my parents, you know, uh, for whatever reason, they put me in front of the podium where other kids were maybe doing some act. And they put me along with them. And when I looked at the audience in front of me, you know, I started crying. And so I still remember that day that, okay, I was crying at the time, you know. So it kind of feels like that, but I'm mature now, so I won't cry. Uh, he had made me cry so many times, you know, and all of you, you know, seeing, uh, you know, Ishwaji in all of you, that makes me cry. And uh, it makes me emotional. And uh, yeah, we are emotional being. And it's been almost a year since he passed away. And it was just yesterday uh, night, I was talking to some uh, some folks and we were saying that how the time has flown. It's uh, been almost a year. Uh, next month is going to be his Vandana and uh, how we were missing him. And uh, I was saying that it's so strange. When we are born, we have, uh, we have family around us. We have parents, we have uh, siblings, we have teachers, we, uh, we are so protected by them. And as we grow older, you know, we get settled, we, we get jobs, we have families, we have kids, and the time passes on. And then we realize that our you know, parents, one by one, they pass away. And Ishwaji, being our spiritual father, he passed away. And we feel spiritually in limbo. We don't know how to make progress forward. But in a strange way, uh, because of that, his that event when he passed away, our longing to see him also is growing inside us. We are constantly seeking him in our hearts, and so he used to in his messages. He used to say so many times that we are here because we are here to experience love, and that is why we see so many faces. According to him, and so many masters, the reality is that. Truly, we are one, and we are just experiencing so many bodies as if we are a drop of that consciousness and experiencing different facets of creation. And at the end, we are all one. So why did we come here? One of the reasons he gave was, primarily the reason was to experience love. It is said that the creator is love. A lot of spiritual texts, they say that at the end of the day, God is love. But that sort of doesn't make sense sometimes, you know. What does it mean? If God is love, what does it mean? But when you say that, okay, love is an expression that can be experienced by people, that makes sense. You know, if we are separated, that, that causes us to long for each other. And that's when we can experience love. And as master, perfect living master, he was here amongst us so that we could experience love. I mean, in normal life, we, we do experience love. When we get married, when we fall in love, when we have kids, you know, we play with them. There are so many emotions that we, we can feel in our life. But then we realize as time passes that 
some of these are just skin deep. You know, sometimes we just fight over trivial matters, even spouses fight, you know, parents and kids fight. Uh, 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 I know I, I fight with my kid, you know, he, he fights with so much vigor, you know, because he's, he's going to school, learning new things. He knows that, okay, whatever he's being taught is, uh, you know, absolutely right. And I'm from a different generation now, you know, so he, if his dad is getting old, you know, he, he, he's getting cuckoo, you know, he has old ideas and so on. So, you know, then we realize that, okay, even though, you know, he has love for me, I have love for him, there is there's something still lacking, you know, at some level we cannot communicate, the words are not enough. And with him being around us, we experience that unconditional love. And we, even though if you see, uh, maybe inside something has changed for a lot of people, you know, he, uh, he changed their life in so many different ways that cannot be seen outside. But inside, deep inside, you feel that you had somebody who was holding your hand. And that is that he seems to be missing now. How do we move forward? And uh, so we, we are here to sort of remember him by holding these uh, satsangs. That's what he did for his master. He was here every month. He traveled in so many places. He, uh, to me, he's, it seemed like uh, since he was born, uh, and of course he was afraid to do, uh, do this work, uh, his, his uh, mother herself had said, uh, had seen dreams of him giving the talks, and great master, his master, Vizur Maharaj Baba Samajinji, had predicted that he would be talking, because a lot of people had said that, okay, he was here incarnated uh, on this planet uh, uh, as different beings, and he had uh, communicated to masses and uh, tried to take them back home uh, for uh, generations. So it is not surprising. And uh, after he was born, he was continuously lecturing. Uh, I recently saw a picture of him uh, in front of some plants where he is apparently talking to plants. And so just imagine, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, we are all his, his spiritual children. He has been amongst us. He has showed us the way how to realize who we truly are because if we if you see around us uh, we see you know creation around us we see people we see things uh, and as we grow from childhood you know you see your parents you see uh, your siblings you see different relationship as you grow you meet different teachers uh, who, who teach you things uh, about how to live in your life and we sort of grow, and this process of growing seems to be uh, with everyone. You know, as a as a body, from a small child we grow. You know, in, in terms of knowledge we try to grow. In terms of wealth we try to grow. In terms of relationship, you know, we we get married, we have kids. We are trying to grow, and it seems like we are always trying to grow, evolve. Evolution seems to be the consistent theme. And in terms of religion, also they are get, they always get refined. Science seems to be growing, although there is seems like there is a cycle as well that uh, you guys are there, you know, uh, there's a concept of 24,000 year cycle in which everything kind of goes through different phases. So you have Iron Age, you have Bronze Age and Golden Age and so on. So things seem to be transforming, you know, and these masters come amongst us to sort of lift us spiritually, make us grow spiritually. Because all we understand about this life is that we have a body and that's it. You know, at, at the end of the day, you know, we die. So, as I was talking to my friend, that uh, it's so strange that uh, you know we have been used to uh, people dying amongst us, but unless we see somebody close by leave us, you know, we don't really realize how close the death is and what is the importance of somebody. You know, so uh, I know I used to miss his lectures sometimes. You know, I would think that okay, he has been giving the same lectures over and over. You know, so what's the point? You know, I can, I can watch him any time. Uh, I'm sure that's true uh, for some of you as well. Now I feel that, you know, I would, I would give my life to just see him again in person, you know, walking. But, you know, he has given his whole life. Since childhood, he has been preparing to do this. And he has been giving so many lectures going around uh, the world. And uh, he used to say that he has traveled around the world more than anybody else, you know, that he knows of. You know, and so he has committed himself to his life. He, he was, uh, you know, he was 90 plus year old. 
and he was uh, getting frail and it was becoming challenging for him. So somehow, you know, selfishly we want uh, people to be around us. You know, we want him to be around us, still guide us. But they have said that all masters, they leave at the end of the day. You know, this is the, the natural law. Anything that is born will die at the end of the day. You know, for look at any life that is alive. If you look at plants, animals, everything, it goes through the same routine. But what we have to hold on is the message that he gave us. And remember, because he was here to give us a message, masters appear amongst us, amongst the seekers, only to convey that truth, that truth is within you. And you have to seek inside to find what is the reality. I remember one, once I met him, and uh, so I got a little more time than usual of two, three minutes. And so I relate to him that, you know, Shoji, I, uh, I heard this story about somebody doing psychedelics and getting these kind of experiences, and that was very vivid. And so he listened to it very curiously and, and did not say much. Next time he met me uh, for uh, breakfast, and he said, Jagannath, you know, the stories that you were saying, everything is inside you. So you just go inside and you will find everything and much more. So he was trying to communicate to us in so many different ways. Every opportunity that he got, he, he would, I felt that he was pushing us inside. Um, I was, uh, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to work with him in three of the companies that he was running. And I would see quite often that after some period of, let's say, business-related work, he would change the subject and he would say, we are just gathering here because we are spiritual beings and we are here to remember our master. And this, this is a spiritual work at the end of the day. And he used to say that all these companies are because great master wanted it this way. So everything he attributed it to his master, great master was in Maharaj Bhava And uh, I remember, you know, so many times that even though the topic was completely unrelated, he saw it as, as being a spiritual work. I had asked him once, how is it that you, you at this age, 90, you know, you go around? Uh, this was a time when he had just finished a lecture and then uh, I was supposed to take him uh, and bring him to my home. And so probably he, his day must have started uh, around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And then he gave a couple of hours of lecture. That was intentional, uh, uh, intensive meditation retreat. And so that must have been, you know, some work. Well, he has been used to all uh, that kind of work. So it was not unusual for him. Uh, but, you know, talking to people, continuously giving lectures, it uh, requires energy. So as a, uh, as a person with a body, you know, he had to spend that energy. And then he met a bunch of us for lunch. And of course, you know, everybody is trying to talk to him, get his attention you know, uh, listen to his jokes. And uh, so that happened and then we you know, brought him home. And so along the way we talked and he's attentively listening to everything that we say. He's in fact asking us about our iPhone that was released. You know, and he was asking, Jagannath, should I buy this phone? The new version, uh, iPhone 10 or 11? And I'm like, well, uh, at the point I was not too keen on, you know, the technology evolution. And I said, yeah, it's good, you know, there are a few features, you know, if you want this, like it has a better camera and, and uh, recording is good and so on. And so he, and then my son was also there, he chimed in and uh, he said, okay, yes, that looks like a good feature. I'm going to take it, you know. So he lived in the moment. And so he listened to all of us and came home and, you know, talked for hours. Uh, he mostly talked, you know, because... I can't talk. And so in presence of him, nobody can talk, you know. So we were merely just listening to all the prasad that was coming to us. And uh, as he was uh, getting ready to leave, that was close to 9, 9.30. So his day started at 10 o'clock, and there he was, uh, 9 o'clock. And in between, uh, you know, I was, I was getting tired. You know, I was feeling sleepy, exhausted. Man, this guy can talk. And uh, so, uh, uh, and, and I guess... Uh, I felt that his body was also slowing down and all he did was like this and he was back to normal and we offered him some tea which he took a few sips of and then he was all right you know there was uh, he was back to normal you know as usual because every time you see him 
he's so radiant, so so present. You know, he will never be distracted. And so, as he was ready to leave, I asked him, "Should you, uh, you know, you are so old, 90 year old, and how is it that you are able to do all this?" It surprises me because I was, you know, I was getting uh, exhausted. You know, I wanted a break. You know, I wanted to take a nap. And uh, he said, "You know, when you're doing work for your master, he gives you energy. You know, you don't feel you don't feel tired." So, you know, I felt that, look at this man, so committed. Every moment he gets, you know, opportunity, he, he gives all, uh, you know, he talks about his master. He gives it back to him, that nothing is happening, uh, you know, because of what he wanted to do. In fact, he said several times that uh, the companies are not successful, probably because master doesn't want it, or this is not the right time. In the past, so many times he tried to, uh, work on some of the ideas, you know, when Isha Puri wanted to do do the work, it never happened. But when Great Master wanted to do it, it always happened. So he always remembered his master. You know, that, that struck me. And I think message for us is to always remember him, you know, and uh, because he was, he was a unique expression of love, total un unconditional love that can, that we normally cannot experience in our relationship. Because you know, we, we go by by the the look of a person or, you know, how much wealth somebody has or how he behaves. So it is so at a superficial level. And here is a person without considering anybody's color, creed, gender, you know, viewpoint, he can he can completely fall in love. And he he would never change. Right? And we have lost that person who who could give us uh, that that love, who could make us feel that love. And no wonder we, we always, you know, when we, are, when we feel that, okay, we are lacking something in our life, you know, we realize that here was a man, you know, who was amongst us and who gave us that love. So we are here to sort of remember whatever messages he gave us. And it is my privilege to be able to talk about that. I know, um, you know, I'm, I'm like a baby, you know, I'm trying to just walk a few steps. You know, I'm myself struggling with meditation. We are in this journey all together. Some of you are ahead, you know, I'm probably much further behind, you know, but I'm just repeating like a parrot, you know, whatever I have learned from him, you know, uh, as he asked me to do, I'm just doing it, you know, and ultimately all the results are up to him. Who can, you know, we are, we are not capable of doing anything, you know, if we could do anything, we would have done it already, right? Uh, but, but with his grace, everything will happen in time. So... So what was his message? I mean, if you look at uh, everything around you, you know, everything seems so real, right? And we feel sort of trapped in this body. And that's why we are looking for help. You know, there is, there is something missing in us. Something tells us that whatever we are experiencing is, you know, it's, it's, it is not right, you know. Maybe you are feeling a pain. A lot of people are feeling emotional pain uh, because of whatever reason, you know. Uh, some people maybe because of issues with spouses, sometimes with parents, sometimes with children, sometimes with a different kind of relationship. We are looking for something. And if it is not uh, at an emotional level, we are looking things, looking at things outside in, in, in matter. We want uh, things of physical comfort. We, we want money, you know. And even though we have money, you know, sometimes so you can see wide spectrum of of people who have, uh, some are poor, some are extremely rich, but if you talk to them, you know, you'll find that the the happiness that one gets out of a lot of money, you know, probably is very, it's limited. He used to, he had done some poll in, I guess, Cambridge when he was uh, studying at MIT, uh, sorry, Harvard, uh, and, and he had asked uh, a person who had, I think, 10 million wealth, uh, you know, so 10 million at the time, probably in, in 70s, 60s, whenever he was here, uh, was a lot of money. And uh, right now, probably that would be 50 or 100 million. And so that's a lot of money. I mean, one, one cannot spend that kind of money. I know if you want to buy a plane or something like that, of course you can. Uh, but uh, that, that is quite limited uh, in the way you can enjoy that. Uh, so Ishoji talked to this person and asked him, are you happy? Uh, and he said, no, I'm not happy. And he asked him why. He said, well, 
there is a neighbor of mine uh, who has more money than I have. You know, even though I have, I have uh, I've done a lot of education, I have PhD, and after starting my company, I've been able to amass this wealth. And here is this guy who is uh, uh, almost uh, uh, illiterate, and he has amassed this much wealth. You know, so he has more wealth than, than I, you know, I could amass with so much struggle. So, you know, people are not just satisfied with what they have sometimes, you know, it is in relation to what others have. You know, so you look around and, you know, you, you start to have these desires that, okay, somebody's driving this car, you know, I should have this car. You know, somebody has a beautiful wife, oh, I should also have a beautiful wife. You know, maybe someday I'll get married, you know, or, or you have desires of all kinds. They seem to last for just short time. You know, once the, the nature of some of these desires is that the moment you acquire them, the moment you have them, you know, the value of that starts to diminish very quickly. Once you've satisfied that desire, the thirst, let's say if you wanted, you know, a lottery, you know, once you have the lottery, you know, uh, probably you will start spending all that money, you know, and then pretty soon you will realize that you are bankrupt. In fact, a lot of people who have won lottery, that's how they end up spending money. You know, they, they spent all that money and they're back to square one. So the, the nature of the external uh, material or emotional uh, aspect is that, you know, even, even, even when you satisfy those desires, they last for a very short period, you know. And, and it seems like we are constantly longing for that satisfaction. And so our, our longings tend to grow. It wants to mature. These masters come and amongst us to tell us that we, indeed we can find the total satisfaction, total bliss if we go inside and find the true nature of us. And the true nature, according to them, is that we are one. And, but for the experience of love, we have come here. You know, if we had, if we were one and we were in total bliss, then what is the point of experiencing all this you know, negativity? If you see, there's so much negativity in the world that is going around us. And, and we are constantly suffering because of that. So how does it make sense, you know, to leave everything that was in bliss, if we were in total bliss, uh, you know, beyond this world, in our true home, what is the purpose of coming here and experiencing all this negativity? There's so much death happening, you know, uh, people fall sick, you know, people uh, don't get enough uh, food, they don't have enough amenities in their life. How does it make sense? And according to Master Ishwaji, and other masters as well who have constantly been amongst us, you know, to take us out of this misery, is that we are here to experience something that was not present, you know, in, in our true home. And we created this duality so so that we can we can experience something different. By by nature we are conscious being. So if if you were to take away everything that we experience right now, you are able to see me here and you are able to see people around here. If you were to shut off this experience, would we still be there? And according to them, yes, we will still be there. Because in our true home, we can just experience everything that we want. We are an experiential being. You know, we are conscious beings. So by, by definition of consciousness, we can be conscious of anything. So for being conscious, we experience things that we can be conscious of. So we decided to go on this roller coaster ride, and uh, this amazing journey, and where we can experience different kind of reality. So according to them, this is not just the only reality that we experience in this earth. There are much more variety of experiences that lie beyond us. And if we were to dip inside us, if we see who we truly are, if we are able to shut off this experience and somehow go go back and uh, retract all the, uh, you know, the attention that is going out, the reason we are experiencing what is here is you're paying attention to things outside yourself. If you were to withdraw that attention back to the point where it is emanating from, then you'll realize that you are still around and new sort of experiences open up. Some of these experiences you can relate in your actual life that uh, whatever teaching the masters have given us could be true. You know, it's we should at least try, if you are seeking, you should you can you can attempt some of the methods that masters have provided us. And some of the common experiences you would find is when you when you sleep, when you go to bed, what happens? You you may find yourself dreaming, you know, you may find yourself in a different world. If it's a vivid dream, 
you could see a lot of colorful experiences with you. You could be flying. There was, there was this philosopher that you should be talked about, Fahim, who, who had this beautiful dream that he was a butterfly and he was flying around in the garden. And, and he experienced himself being as a butterfly. When he woke up in the morning, he talked to his friends and he said, I have this amazing dream and I'm so confused now whether I'm this being right now as a Fahim or is, am I dreaming right now? Because this seems as real as the dream I had last night, which was being a butterfly flying around in the garden. And of course his friends told him that, Fahim, you are, you are not, not making any sense. You know, you could not be a butterfly. You know, you saw a butterfly and you saw a butterfly fly around in the garden. And he said, no, I was a butterfly. This is my experience. And now my experience is that I'm fine, this person. So I do not know what is the reality. So when you wake up from the dream, then, then you can say, you can recollect from your memory that you had a dream. So you can probably say that okay, the dream was not real. But what is the nature of reality? What is reality, right? Is it real that we are seeing uh, all of you? Is it how real is this, right? Can we, of course we can, we can experience something and we can say that our experience at this moment is real. Ishiji used to talk about, uh, you know, if you're having a sip of cup in your dream, so is the cup real? The dream that you are having, is that real? You can always say that, yes, you are experiencing a cup, you are experiencing a dream. But when you wake up from the dream, what do you say? Was, uh, was it a dream? Yes, you will say now, because you woke up from the dream, you say that you had a dream because you can't see the cup with you, you know. If you could see actually the cup with you, then probably you could be a lot of lotteries in your dream and bring it back, right? So, so that is the nature of reality that it, it can go to a different dimension and then create these things for you to experience. Because we are an experiential being, we are conscious at the end of the day. And so as a consciousness, we in the dream, we are creating these realities of cup uh, and the drink and what, what matters is your experience that you are actually experiencing a cup. You are experiencing yourself drinking. That is the experience that remains real. You know, but you can't say the same thing about the cup and the drink. Similarly, if in your dream, let's say if you are giving a lecture in this theater in your dream and you see people around here, would you say that the people that you are experiencing is real? And if it is a dream, am I the one dreaming or all the people that you see in the dream, they are dreaming. Am I dreaming or all of you are dreaming together? But you'll realize, I will realize only when I wake up from the dream, right? If you were to draw analogy uh, with, the, with the example that I gave about drinking uh, in the dream, then definitely if you wake up from the dream, then you'll realize that, okay, you are dreaming. But you can't possibly go into the dream again. Uh, unless, unless you have become adept and uh, of going into the another level. So how do we find what, what, what is real? How do we find our true nature? Because Master has said that if you go inside, we are going to be able to find our true nature. So why do we want to find our true nature? What is the benefit of this? They have said that we are experiencing certain things that is not real. And the attachment that we have created, because we believe that we are a physical being, we need certain things, you know, we have developed by looking at outside, you know, it, it could be a longing for a jewelry, uh, you know, I know uh, one time some of us uh, went to meet a master and then this lady expressed a desire to have a handbag. She wanted a particular kind of maybe Gucci or something like that. And that was her desire, you know, and I think that, you know, these desires automatically don't come to us, you know, it, uh, probably the desire of going away from here uh, probably comes naturally but most of the desires that we have in our life is mostly by looking at something else and I know in Indian philosophy uh, it's, it's kind of said that when you look outside the world sort of influences you and creates a desire in you and so we are sort of entangled with having different kind of things in our, in our life and that's what we run towards and realize that these things don't give us satisfaction that lasts for a long time. And that's why we end up seeking, you know, something that is truly uniquely lasting. So what is the benefit of 
finding who we truly are. If, if we are able to sort of uh, uncover this veil that is on us, and in, in, according to Indian uh, philosophy, it is said that the, the reality that we experience is actually a myth. It is sort of like a dream. It doesn't, you know, nobody can deny that, you know, this is what we are experiencing is not real. Yet we are calling it dream. What does it mean? You know, it is, it is a form of illusion, even though there is nothing, but yet we are able to experience things. It is similar to what Fahim had said in his dream that he was experiencing a, a, a butterfly. While he was experiencing the butterfly, he could not deny that he was, he was a butterfly. Only after waking up, he could say that that was a dream. So that is the situation we find ourselves in, that whatever we see around us, none of this is permanent. It is not going to last here. Right? Everybody, uh, things are changing. If you see in the whole universe, we grow, plants grow, things around us constantly change. People die, masters die. The universe itself is changing. You know, it, it seems like such a fine balance. If you see in the outer solar system, things are constantly moving, and they are in such a great balance. You know, if you if you were to if you take the solar system and maybe just suspend one one planet, you know, maybe Mars, you know, that is going around the sun. Do you think things will be stable? Probably everything will fall apart, you know, uh, because everything is so so finely balanced because of laws of gravitation. And so things there are things that are uh, that are controlling the whole thing, you know. And and we don't we don't understand that, you know. We don't know how this universe is working. You know, we are so marvelled by our own body sometimes that it is able to you know fix things. You know, not only we have physical things in us. But there are so much emotional things, you know, that you can't you can't find a physical correspondence like the love that you feel, uh, let's say, uh, jealousy or hatred, or sometimes uh, feel that you have seen somebody, right? You have these feelings. How do these arise out of? You know, you can't you can't attribute completely to this physical body, and so we are trying to, you know, a lot of times when we uh, find ourselves in troubling situation, uh, and we want to get out of that and we are unable to, and then we try to seek. And so ultimately the goal is to find this, this place where we are completely satisfactory, right? Uh, because, you know, if, if you get everything in the world, the, the effect of that lasts for a short period. So we want to find something that is permanent. And we know that, you know, people are gonna die, so we want to find that permanent place that we could uh, we could find and, and realize that, uh, that the truth is that we are sentient beings, we are conscious beings, and we never die at the end of the day. And so that part of us, you know, which still remains, like when you go to, go to the dream and your body is lying somewhere, uh, but you are still alive. And when you wake, out, wake up from these dreams, you know, and you find yourself in the, in the bed, you are still alive. The dream has ended. And uh, so we want to find that, that place that can give us complete satisfaction, complete happiness, complete unity. And if we, and it so happens that the God, the way he created God or, you know, ultimate creator, the way he has created, constructed this creation is that us human beings have been endowed with this unique value that in this body, we can find the ultimate reality. And there are no other forms. According to Indian scriptures, there are 8.4 million species. You know, I do not know how they were able to categorize that, but let's say that is true. You know, or, or of course you can experience innumerable life forms outside. If you just go, there are so many. If you go outside, there are so many different type of trees, plants, uh, birds, insects you will find. Uh, in fact, I am always amazed when I take a flight that there are, you know, on the on the ground you can see so much vegetation. You know, and if you're going uh, over the ocean, you can you can you can marvel how much life it contains, right? So there are so many variety of lives, and out of all that, that the, the lives that you can actually see, right, physically see, and there are so many life forms that probably we can't even experience. And Ishaji, in one of his discourse, he said that you know our visual perce perception, our audible perception, is so limited. Right, uh, in, in few probably our auditory, uh, you know, perception just ranges from few kilohertz to maybe 20, uh, 25 kilohertz. So that's the, uh, you know, uh, that's the very small band of frequency ranges we can, we can hear, 
you can perceive. And you could have so many other type of, uh, uh, you know, frequency, you know, beyond that, you know, uh, like, you know, X-ray, you know, gamma rays and so on. So is it not conceivable that there could be something outside that range that we can perceive of? You know, in fact, if you take animals like dogs, they can, they can hear somebody whistling, but we can't hear. Right? I guess dog whistle, that's what it does. And, and so even animals probably communicate and we can't understand that. You know, so there's so much range of perception out there, so much creation out there. And out of that creation, what a, what a unique gift that we have. Masters have said that in this body, we can realize who we truly are. And we can realize that we are one at the end of the day. And so isn't that amazing that they have come here amongst us because of our seeking. You know, we are a seeker here. You know, without this, um, not only Ishwaji, but so many masters have said, you know, if, if you are able to get in their company, that means that you are a seeker. You know, without this uh, uh, explicit arrangement, you know, it is very hard to be born at the right place with the right people, you know. So these coincidences, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, like me, you know, found in through YouTube or maybe some other references. But what opportunity we have been given that uh, a man like him, you know, who gave his whole life to teach us, you know, uh, mostly, uh, you know, all these masters give their teaching, they hold satsangs. But most of the time they 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 come within us, uh, amongst us, to hold, hold our hand and take us back home. They say that, okay, we, we do... We act like uh, you know other teachers because we are teachers. We are we are parents. So they you know they they act like us. They act like them. You know they uh, they act like parents. You know they will give, give you advice. And so he did that. And so the ultimate message was that if you are able to find your true identity, that you will realize that what you are experiencing right now is an illusion. Right? If you could. If you could see that you are a conscious being and you are separate from this individual that you are encased within, right? This this body of yours is just like a garment that you're wearing at this point of time, but you are somebody else. So it's like you know uh, worrying about your car because you drive in your car, or worrying about your jacket, you know because the jacket has become dirty or it has holes in that, you know, or you are you are maybe suffering because of that. Not an emotion, emotional suffering could be that the relationship that that is not working out for you, uh, and, and because you believe it, I mean you are totally tied down by this relationship, it feels so real to you. But if you were to take a step back, few steps back, and realize that, hey, this person you think that you are, you know, who is in relationship with somebody else, and that's why you are mentally suffering, it is just an illusion, you know, and you are not only you know not intellectually. But if you are able to actually feel it, convince yourself, or, or imagine as if you were an, you were a great artist, right? You wanted to draw a nice painting, and so would you at that point just draw just one color, take a canvas and just take a, maybe draw blue or green or just single color? Would you be happy? If you if you wanted to make a movie, right, a, a thriller movie, let's say, right? So. We, we, we appreciate movies because there is so much ups and downs. There's a you know, complicated plot, you know. Uh, there's you know a lot of maybe backstabbing going on. There's a lot of murder, you know, and the murder gets solved at the end of the day. You know, maybe the the, the plot runs over generations. You know, I was watching Narcos. You know, uh, there's a Netflix serial, so I was like, wow, you know, there's so much uh, violence, you know, so much drama, and at the end, you know, of course, you know, all these. Uh, gang leaders end up dying. So, you know, I, I, I see that, okay, if, if I'm watching a movie, you know, that is that is too simplistic, you know, uh, and, you know, something happens that you can predict, you know, it is not interesting to watch, you know, there's no, not enough ups and downs. So, you know, if you were to place yourself in the shoes of a creator and want to have a beautiful painting or want to have a beautiful script, a drama, you know, would you not want to have interesting characters? I know once you place yourself in the midst of the character, then the whole thing changes. But if you're writing a script, you do your best to write all this complicated, I mean, at our own level, when we want to appreciate a drama or appreciate a script, 
we we appreciate things that are slightly complicated you don't want a kinder level uh, kindergarten level you know story there was a king and you know there was a, he lived ever uh, happily uh, with his queen and you know you just want a little more drama you want a little more complications right and so after having created that because you are you are a creator you are all powerful would you not want to be actually inspect the, the characters that you have created you know if you have drawn something would you not want it to look its best you know would you not want it to have uh, so many aspects that can be appreciated because you are a creator you can do whatever you want so you created this wonderful drama and then not only that not only you can appreciate it you know as 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 a sort of third person you know uh, looking separately at the drama but because you could place yourself in the midst of all these characters that you have built and then appreciate because you want to really know the character that you're creating is it is it really good or not or you want to modify your drama accordingly right so i mean i'm a software engineer you know sometimes i i in my limited world i try to create software and i know it, it breaks down all the time that's why we have constantly evolving technology you know it never settles you know today we have uh, you know 4g tomorrow we will have 5g there all these interesting cars coming you know and so we are trying to create all the time so this is a this sort of essence uh, that uh, from the creator has come down to us and we experience all that in a in a sort of in a drop form you know the love that we experience different kind of aspect that we experience that is all part of that creator who who has the capacity to to experience everything and as a drop of that creator we can also experience and that's why we are also sentient beings we can experience so you know if you put yourself in the shoe of the creator would you not want to create something something nice that you can enjoy and so happens that without i mean you you could create that can look ordinary you can just paint a picture a large canvas with just one color and appreciate that color you know but you will get bored pretty quickly you know if if you're seeing the picture it's so just one picture you know with one color every day would it not be boring maybe you can appreciate that for a few days but after that you would want to you know change the color at least right or if you are having the same breakfast every day would you want to have the same breakfast every day no i would not want to you know i get tired you know in, in, in india if you go if you travel from place to place there are so many variety of breakfasts breakfast languages uh different taste you know um lot of spices you know uh, somebody somebody had said uh not uh, ishwar ji uh, but you know i have a habit of listening to a lot, lot of masters you know anybody who can uh, illuminate me with some knowledge yeah. you know uh, i love listening to every kind of people to uh, enlighten myself and this person said that unless you have a variety you know your life is not rich unless a culture has culture uh, without a uh, lot of variety you know that is that means the culture has to still go further you know so uh, if you want to see which culture has you know a lot of riches you know it has it has progressed uh, look at look at the the variety that you see uh, with that culture that is a sort of speaks to the culture's richness so similarly you know a, a simple painting is not going to give you a joy you know you want to add characters you know if you see within this planet you know there is like so much uh, in nature there is so much diversity there is desert there are mountains you know the places that in constantly India. rain you know all all kind of combination you know and and if you stay in just one place let's say if you uh if you stay in a uh, place that is desert yeah. you know yeah. and you you well, see sand changed, most of the time it will be hard you know maybe no. temporarily yeah, you will enjoy it maybe because there are a lot no, of dead no, no. uh, trees you know uh, or whatever goes there the but room. at some point you will get tired you want to experience some rain you know but you can go to the other extreme rain uh, places where it rains it's a lot that you get so tired of that place as well so there. you want yeah, to yeah. sort of go from place to place yeah. you want to enjoy different experiences and similarly in our life you know we we get tired of different experiences uh and that's why you know the the fleeting joys that we experience when when you get something let's say if you had small desire of having a cake let's say after having a cake you know uh, at some point it, it, you get saturated you feel that okay you can't eat any more you know 
you may not be full of you may not your stomach may not be full of that cake but your desire is somehow satisfied now at that point you want to change the taste right so we are experiential being so we want to enjoy these things so going back to the canvas you know that that one color may not be good enough so the creator you know just like us you extrapolate yourself to being in the shoes of a creator and then you would see that okay it's natural that you know one would want to experience different characters in, in, you want to put different uh, you know characters in, in your play so so did uh, so did the ultimate creator he created so many of us with with if you if you compare you know i know genetically speaking probably we are 99.9 similar i mean same can be said uh, you know between us and banana apparently you know, there is 99% similarity you know uh, that actually surprised me when i heard about this that you know the dna within uh, a food and us is so common you know that uh, the 99% apparently and uh, so so going back we are so similar yet we can experience so much uh, uh, in a different way you know not not two people in this earth are same experiencing the same thing you might be twins you know but a lot of twins also go their own separate way right uh, so there is so much variety uh, and this is this variety exists because creator wanted to experience love initially he wanted to experience love and that's why he created but then beyond love he wanted because he could experience so many other things he ended up creating added all these you know call it complications or facets of life that you can experience right different kind of joys that you can experience uh, different emotions that you can range of experiences you can have emotional experiences you can have so we are we are experiencing by sitting in this body a uh, different type of life that is different from somebody else it is because this is what the ultimate created one creator wanted to experience that's what these masters have told us that he want he is the only thing that actually exists so if you were to shut off all the experiences then you would find that there is one clear reality at the end of the day but then what do you do and if you are that reality and you can experience at all times and, and that is that too it is beyond this time and space so what we experience here you know there's there's a linearity of time and uh, we we know that like you know in the morning you have to come here and at some point this is going to end and time time sort of flows we are born we die but in that space or if you want to call it space or non space non time right if you are pure consciousness that can experience everything anything all powerful then would you not want to experience actually everything you want to write a perfect drama out there and experience everything that you create the 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 reason for creating is to experience and if you create characters but if you don't feel what the characters are feeling that's not an experience and just by painting uh, just one color you're not not experiencing much you want to widen your experience you want to deepen your experience you want you want to really enjoy it. and that's why we see all ups and down the the extremes of duality that we see is result of that if there was no day you could not say that there was a night without morning there is no evening everything lives in duality there's there's uh, there's life and then there is a death right so without one the other cannot be experienced and both of them need to exist so that you can experience both and so sadness happiness they have to go together and there is a there is no absolute in a lot of these things right uh, there is a sort of gray between in between as well you know sometimes you are you know somewhat sad you are somewhat happy you know then there are extreme levels of happiness sadness you know when somebody passes you of course experience a lot of sadness you know but then of course if you let's say lose your uh, if you have an accident you know where you uh, nothing happens maybe just the car gets damaged you'll be unhappy but okay you know it's not a big deal you will go past that so there are a range of experiences we we see and so we experience duality and and if you compare that with you know the non time non space reality that exists 
beyond this place, you know, where everything is in bliss. Yet, you know, this part of our existence, where there is a duality, that is a complete opposition to what exists out there, what is the reality. So we are able to experience through this duality what exists on the other side, or we can talk about that other side. So masters have told us that there is a way for us to go back and uh, in this body the, that we have been given, you know, we are, if we want, we can experience what the totality looks like. And this is the only body that has been gifted by him, the creator, uh, you know, in, in all of this creation. And that, that is such a unique gift that we can, in, sitting in this body, we can experience the different levels of creation and even the ultimate reality. And even can merge with the with the creator himself, and so you know the time that we have been, been given in this in this life is of such a value that you know we remember the messages that masters have given us, and it's it's not good enough to just listen to the lectures. You know I've listened to a lot of lectures. You know I'm sure you all have listened to lectures, but he has through his lectures he has pushed us to remember him. Uh, and his messages so that we can we can put some work uh, into meditation and the teachings that have that he has given us and I'm sure a lot of some of you have have heard him talk about how to sit in meditation this is a work in progress for me as well and so I'll, I'll share what uh, you know uh, I'll maybe try to repeat some of what he has said and the, the, one of the very basic things I try to remember is you have to first start from the right place of meditation. You have to find where you actually are. And so you have to imagine that if you, if you just introspect, if you just sit quiet and shut off, let's say you close your eyes and, and in a silent place, if you try to introspect and see see where you are, right, in, 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 with respect to your your maybe ears, eyes, uh, you know, your parts of the body, you realize that you are somewhere in the head, you know, that, that you can feel even now, because you are able to see, you know, us, then you are seeing through these eyes. And if you look at the structure of the head and how eyes are placed, you'll realize that, you know, if you introspect, you'll feel that, you know, the ears are on your side and eyes are in front of you. And so inside the head, you are, that's where you are, that's where you are operating from. If you just uh, think it a little bit, you'll realize that most likely it's the center, you know, that's where you are operating from. And all masters tell us is this, there's just a game of attention that is going on because we are placing attention on what we think is outside because of which we are able to perceive things that are outside. And if you are able to take that attention back to the place where it's flowing from, which happens to be the center of, of, of your head, then, then you will, of course, one thing that will happen is you will stop perceiving what is outside. Right? So if you close your eyes and you imagine that you are somewhere, you know, that you feel that is you and your ears are on your side, your eyes are in front of you, it will start from a very small space uh, because, the, because of the nature of uh, attention is such that wherever you place your attention, you know, that that thing becomes alive, that becomes uh, the prominent part. So uh, you are listening to me and you are able to hear me because you are, you are placing your attention on my words. You are able to see me because you are looking at this direction and probably you don't, you are not aware that there are lights that are turned on, there is a picture here, you know, there is, I'm sitting on a chair. Only when I call out these things, you will probably pay attention to that. But the rest of the things sort of blend away. You are not even conscious of that, right? So, similarly, um, Ishaji used to give example of, or let's say there's an orchestra going on. And so, and there are various instruments playing. So if you just pay attention to one instrument, let's say flute, somehow you'll start uh, forgetting the other instrument. They will sort of fade back and the flute will become louder and louder. So it's a game of attention. So when you start thinking that uh, you are in your head, so initially you'll know that, okay, these ears and eyes are very close to you. But 
uh, as you uh, you know uh, focus yourself uh, on your attention on yourself being wherever you are then you will find that somehow things seem to expand it becomes larger uh, so this is this is how the, the attention sort of works naturally right so and if you're able to limit your attention to just the place where you are at which is the middle of your head and if you are able to imagine that you are sitting in that place and this is that becomes a probably a big room where you have ears on your side and uh, you know eyes in the front that you will you will realize that the the sounds coming from inside it becomes to be, it becomes louder and louder you you will experience different kind of noises appearing sometimes out of the body or sometimes what feels like it is it is not coming from anywhere particular and things become louder and louder and then you will start uh, experiencing lights and that's when you know that okay you are probably on the right track and the reason that would happen is because you are not paying attention to things that are outside right uh, and you will forget where you are sitting you know uh, you will forget the room that you are sitting particular room you are sitting in because if you are remembering those things uh, then your attention is still outside and the idea is to bring the attention back to to wherever it is emanating from right you are retracting all the attention and so all, all the doors that we have in our body eyes ears mouth nose and so on you know that takes our attention outside but if we have to turn those inside and that's what uh, you know they mean by going inside taking all your attention inside so as the attention starts coming back then you realize that there are different things that are not associated with physical things that you experience in normal day to day life you know they start coming to you you know sometimes you will see flash flashes of scenery appear in front of you so that will give you a glimpse that okay there is something other than what you physically experience through your your know, hands eyes ears and so on so that can be uh, you know with the practice more and more you can start to open that window and if you have been initiated with with uh, from the masters like ishwar ji or some other perfect living masters then you are already practically home you know because he has he has given you his word that he is going to take you home and he says in your life you know you have been uh, you know you have been blessed by initiation you know and he has committed he has given uh, his word that he is going to remain your friend forever and so yeah even if your meditation is just for mind so that's how i try to tell myself convince myself that okay you're not going anywhere in meditation forget that he's going to take care of you anyway regardless he's given you a word you know so just do your best nobody can do better than their best so you know uh, so yeah, i'm just here to share the things that he used to share uh, i do not know what the time is <laughs> Okay, it's almost one hour. Thank you so much for coming here. You know, uh, it was great to see all of you in person here. And uh, next month we are going to have Spandara, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to see at least some of you. Uh, thank you again for coming here and uh, listening uh, and giving me opportunity to serve my master.